Hi, Mom. Yes. Okay, hello. Hi, everyone. Good welcome evening. Back. Yes, welcome to our special CNY uh, live cooking class brought to you by the Common Kitchen and You're Right. Uh, so, how's everyone's uh, CNY celebration? You enjoy lots of good food? I did. You did? <laughs> Okay, shall we say a uh, Chinese New Year greeting? Please. So that we just practice? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to start with Xin Yan Kuai Le, New Nian Da Ji Da Li. I remember, yeah. Yay! Okay, <laughs> now with that out of the way, we are going to start cooking. So, what are we going to make today, Payao? We've got two dumpling recipes to do. We're doing egg and chive dumplings, mm. and we're going to be doing our chicken and cabbage dumplings. Chicken, cabbage, and the first one is egg and chives. Egg and chives. And we are not going to be making fresh pastry like we do at Commune Kitchen. Yes. If you want to do fresh pastry, come to a class. Yes. It's better to learn the live, actually, like with Paya beside you. Yeah, because it's uh, very tricky. Yes. We need to be using te this. Feel the texture. Yeah. yeah. We're going to be using this. So, we're using Taiwan dumpling pastry today. You can use any fresh pastry that you found. This is what we're using. Yeah, yeah, I can hold this. You can use any fresh pastry that you found in your supermarket today. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. Just yes. make sure, don't open it yet. If you have opened it already, use a damp towel. Keep it covered so it doesn't dry out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay? if you dry out and it become hot, then it will be it difficult won't be pleasant. and pleasant for you when you do the wrapping. Neither would it be pleasant to eat later on. So mm -hmm. I'm just, just going to keep this covered like this since I've opened it already. And we're going to move on and we're going to start with our Chinese chives and egg. Yes. First, okay. So the ingredients my, are super simple. Super simple. So for this, I need some Chinese chives. I've got about 100 grams of chives. Mm. Keep those ready, rinsed already. And then I've got three free range eggs mm -hmm. that I'm going to be scrambling in a minute. Yes. I've got some soy sauce. This is just light, light soy, sauce. soy sauce. I've got some sesame oil. This is toasted sesame oil. Great. I have got some white, white pepper. pepper. Okay. And that's it. And some vegetable oil. This is for frying our eggs first. Okay. Shall we get started? Yes, please. All right. So let's focus on the ingredients first here on our chopping board. We're going to start by chopping the chives. Yes. And having them ready. Okay. okay? So I'm going to get rid of the white part. Yes. So we need this. This is quite fibrous. Yeah. So we get rid of this. About an inch and a half. Yeah. About an inch, uh, four centimeters mm. or so. Yeah. And then we're going to start chopping the rest of the chives very, very finely. Okay. So whenever I chop herbs, I always make sure I chop them just once. I don't butcher my herbs by chopping them over and over again. And that's because then all your flavor goes into your board. I think I might have mentioned this before. Mm. Yeah, I always yeah, say this about my classes. It's good to yeah, refresh our memory. I forgot about it. Mm. Yeah. So always, always start with your, when you start chopping your herbs, chop them just once if you can and chop them really fine in the beginning or however you want to chop them. But remember to chop them just once mm. with a sharp knife. Okay? Mm. So one sharp cut. And I've got it ready. Okay. Nice. All right. I can smell these. This, this, they don't smell very pleasant, but they're so tasty. <laughs> when you yes. eat them. Because they are raw now, but once they've been cooked, yes, they it's completely different. When I used to live in China, yes. our IE used to make dumplings for us. And these were generally made at breakfast time. Oh, yes. And she would always say, we can't make these on weekdays okay because it's going to make your mouth stink really bad and your colleagues or your friends are not going to like you anymore <laughs> right so you got to eat this on a saturday or sunday morning okay keep she's, the husband she's, away she's very considerate <laughs> <laughs> basically keeps your husband away okay all right so this awesome. is done already all right. yes all, all done already yeah we're going to start scrambling our eggs if you're done chopping your chives give us a thumbs up so we can move on and scramble our eggs now yes I'm going to switch on my stove top. Mm. Guys, done? Okay, super. Let's move on and switch on our stove top on medium to high flame. Here we go, fry. And get your oil ready. Get your eggs ready as well. I've got a few free range eggs here, which I am going to start by cracking in my bowl. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
two, three. And once I'm done with this, I am simply going to whisk these together using a fork or a whisk. Okay, done, ready. Okay, get your bowl nice and hot. Get your wok nice and hot, not your bowl. You're very quiet today, Shinyan. Yes, I'm observing this. <laughs> it's very soothing yeah, experience of making chai and eggs. So it's a vegetarian recipe, is it? Uh, if you consider eggs vegetarian, yes. Mm, Most yes. people don't. So. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> mm. Always make sure your wok is hot before you add your oil. Mm. Uh, just to make sure your oil doesn't disintegrate. Yes. Yeah. So actually dumplings are more from the northern part of China. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, uh, don't uh, think all Chinese know how to make dumplings wrong because uh, no, like I grew up a bit of in Shanghai, but in Singapore, really, they don't know how to make dumplings. No, yeah, and the northern part in China, they make dumplings uh, like on a regular basis, and mm -hmm. especially for New Year, it's a must have, must eat dish. Yeah, it's the tradition, isn't it? Yes, it is. The family does it at 12. It's Night. Exactly. So they will bring in dinner. They watch the, the spring festival gala on TV show uh, every year. It's a tradition. And then like around 10 p.m. they will start making people, uh, getting ready the feelings. And then they will get it ready and eat it at 12. Yeah, past midnight. Mm -hmm. They'll probably play with some firecrackers if it's still allowed. Yeah, that's the, the tradition. Okay, see the... Um, yes, we see the smoke. The smoke it's coming out. Now take about a tablespoon, a whole tablespoon of oil now. Okay. And it's hot already. You can see from the bubbles rising in yes. there. Yeah. And pour in your egg. If you think your pan is too hot at this point, reduce it. Slightly. Do we season eggs at all? No need no. to season it. Okay. It's fine. Just put it in. Put it all in. And we're not going to do this Gordon Ramsay style. Okay. This is just a dirty scramble. Okay. Okay. All right. So just mix it all together. Nobody's watching. Nobody is judging. Nobody cares. All because right? they're all going to be later chopped and, made yeah. and mixed with the chives and go into the dumpling fillings. Yeah, I'm actually mincing them right away. See? Yes. Yeah. So there's no need to chop them again. Just mince them right away in your pan. And once they're dry, like they are now, just yep. turn off your heat or take okay. them off the heat. I press okay, the so magic done. button. Yeah, that's done. Oh. Already. And there's nothing else to it. That's it. Okay. You just mince them nicely. Yes. Right away. Mm. Is there a ratio or number of eggs uh, like to the chives or to the uh, number of dumplings you want to make? Yes, so we're doing three eggs today. Yes. Three medium to large eggs to 100 grams of chives. Mm -hmm. um, these are enough for about 30 dumplings. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you want to add more eggs, you know, if you like eggs more, if you like chives more, depending on your own palate, you can increase the amount of either. It's fine. Cool. Yeah. We're going to add our chives now. Sorry, sorry. Okay. All your chives go in. My heat is off already. If you want to cook your chives a little bit, you can, but I don't usually cook them because they will actually wilt from the latent heat of the pan. Mm, okay. Just mix it all up. Oh, wow. Interesting. They're definitely much greener now. Yeah. <laughs> if you yellow. cook them, they go all um, brown and mushy. Mm. Ah, so okay. Not. So this actually retains the color, but if you want to cook them, some people actually cook the chives. My IE used to cook the chives. Oh wow! Okay, and she would also make scallion pancakes. Oh, egg yes. and scallion pancakes with it. That's delicious. Yeah. With any leftover filling. Mm. Okay, so that's this is done, and we are going to add the seasonings now. Okay. Okay. To to the directly to the to the pan. pan. I can just okay. add it directly to the pan, and I'll just transfer everything into a bowl later on. Okay. Yeah. Ah, for the seasonings, we, we haven't added any salt to it. No. So we're going to be adding salt in the form of soy sauce. Okay. All right. Yes. We, we like our soy sauce. Yeah. I'm going to add a tablespoon yes. of soy sauce. Let me grab a tablespoon. Yes. It smells really good. In case you're wondering, yes, the chives after they've been slightly heated uh, with the eggs, Smells amazing. They're just such good friends, eggs and chives. They go yeah, really well together. They do. And you can eat this by itself, really. Yes, yes. Yeah. I Actually, eat. it is a dish I, I remember eating when I was growing up. 
Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I've added one tablespoon of soy sauce in there mm. to give it some moisture. Mm. Just bring it all together. Mm. And then add a teaspoon of sesame oil. One okay, teaspoon, only a teaspoon. Just okay. a teaspoon. I'm just going to eyeball this. We need one teaspoon, which is about a third of a tablespoon. Okay. okay. One teaspoon of sesame oil. Yes. And a good sprinkle of white pepper. Yes. Okay. Ooh. All right, that's it. Now just bring it all together. Is it okay to use black pepper if you don't have white pepper? You can, but it's not very traditional. Mm. White pepper is generally used in most dumplings. Most dumplings, yeah, yes. because it's got a milder flavor. Yes, and it's more pepper. like very fine as well. Yes, it is super fine. So, so it mingles dumplings. very well with the filling. Right. Oh wow! It smells really, aroma is really nice because the white pepper really brings out, uh, yeah, the a bit of spiciness, like a bit of kick. Mm-hmm. It's hot. Okay, there's that's it done. Okay, yes, that is, it's, do. it's real pepper. Someone is sneezing. <laughs> now all I have to do now is just transfer it into my bowl and have it ready. Yes. Um, we need to make sure our filling is cool before we fill our dumplings with it. I see. Okay. Do you just leave them uh, outside in room temperature, or yeah. you put them in the in the fridge? Or? Well, we've got another 15, 20 minutes before we move on. And make the filling so we'll, we can leave it outside okay. it's not a problem yep but if your room is warm then might as well put it in the fridge yeah to cool it down faster mm. all right should be okay though by the time we're done with our chicken filling yes this the this egg will be chives, cool. yeah filling will be cool. okay all done Ta-da! Ta-da! let's share it to the camera right, i can actually eat this now yes i'm hungry <laughs> not smells... yet please do not eat our filling we have 30 dumplings to make Look at this. The smell is making me hungry. Okay, so we leave it aside. Let me just scrape the okay. spatula yes. to get every single bit out. There. All right. Done. Yes, we'll come back One to down, later. One to go. If everyone's done, give us a thumbs up so we can move on to our chicken filet. Yay! So the chicken filling, you can also use other type of meat? Yes, meat? you can. So mm-hmm. my favorite meat to use when I'm doing a minced meat filling is pork. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be using chicken thighs today, which okay. are actually hard to find. Um, so I make my own. You make your own minced chicken thigh? Yeah, I make my own thighs. <laughs> <laughs> I grow my own chickens and I cut them. Uh, Definitely one of a kind. Yeah, so I, I buy thighs and then I mince them in my food processor because thighs obviously have more fat content. Uh, compared to breast, when you buy minced chicken in the markets or in your supermarket, it's always chicken breast. I see. And the meat is very lean, mm-hmm. which you can use. You just have to add a little more fat in the form of sesame oil. I see. Okay, but it's much nicer if you do the filling with minced pork. Okay. And when you go to your butcher, if you want to do uh, traditional Chinese dumplings, yes. it's always pork. Yes. It's always, it always pork. I mean, I never actually had chicken dumplings in China when I lived there during my five years there and my 16 years in Hong Kong, never ever saw chicken dumplings. I think it's a new thing. You can see the restaurants now. Yes, of it for people who have dietary restrictions. Yes, I, I mean, Chinese love our, we love our pork. And the pork in China is so good. So we, if you do end up making the dumplings with minced pork, remember to ask your butcher to give you 25% minced fat. Um, so the ratio is 240, in 240 grams of minced meat, you'll need about 25%, which is 60 grams of minced fat, plus the rest, um, 180 grams. Oh, I did math <laughs> so quickly. <laughs> 180 grams of minced pork. Does that make sense? With chicken, you can't have that. Just use chicken thighs if you can. If you can't, just use breast. Whatever you've got today, uh, use that. Mm. I've got chicken thighs. Get those out of the fridge and pop them in a bowl, a larger bowl, a large-ish bowl that you can use. Mm. Shall we move the camera here so everyone can see? Yeah. I'm going to get my chicken out of the fridge. I've already minced it. It's right here. Yes. Okay. And I'm going to pop this in this bowl for now. All right. And have it ready. I think it's the first time I'm looking at minced chicken thigh. Really? <laughs> well, in yes. China, they actually um, do this all the time. Like if you were to make chicken dumplings at home, which I often did in China. Yes. And a lot of home cooks do. Yep. Like in restaurants, you obviously can't get uh, chicken dumplings in China. Mm-hmm. 
but at, when people do it at home, they get chicken thighs and they mince away with their cleavers, with their large Chinese cleavers. Yep. On your chopping board, they don't use machines to do this. Yes. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Choppers. Yeah. So we're going to get started by chopping our cabbage first. I have about 120 grams of mm -hmm. cabbage here. So get your cabbage out, people. That's the first step we're doing. Get your cabbage out and mince it, chop it as fine as you can. All right. So we're going to slice it first. This is the first step. Always chop your cabbage first when you're using cabbage and dumplings because you need to get the water, all the excess water out of the cabbage. Cabbage has tons of water in it. So much water. I was impressed by the amount of water I got out of the, the cabbage. I actually used the um, Chinese cabbage, not this Beijing cabbage. Right. The, the bigger one, the long one. Yeah, the like shapes. Napa cabbage. Yeah. Okay. Oh my God, so much water. Mm. And that's so light, isn't it? Yes. This one has a lot of water too. Mm. So, so slice it first and then keep chopping. Yes. As finely. Why do we need to remove the water? Because it's mostly water. Mm. And, and if we don't why remove is it, it not good? Yeah, why can't we? If you don't remove it, the salt from your soy sauce and any uh, additional salt that you add to your dumplings is going to make your cabbage sweat a lot and release oh. all that water in your filling, oh, making no. the filling really, really watery and it'll be very hard to work with. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Because what, what happens when it's too watery? It just makes the filling really watery and then you can't fill up, fill your dumplings. It'll just be very hard for you. It's just going to go everywhere, all the water. Right. Yeah. If you're using this quantity, this is a large quantity, you see. Mm. If you're using just about a quarter cup or so, like when I do Shalong Bao classes, I only use about a quarter cup of cabbage in my recipe. I don't squeeze the water out then because that little water actually makes the dumplings really moist. Mm. Yeah. But this amount of cabbage, you need to yeah, let it sweat and remove yeah. the water. Another um, way, another filling recipe would be to do minced pork and chive, mm, minced which is very traditional. Yes, very. Right? Yeah, so lots and lots of chives like we did with the eggs. And then you use minced uh, pork, but don't cook your pork, okay? It's just raw pork. Right. Yeah. Okay, so we are chopping the cabbage. Yeah, keep so chopping. Fine. Keep chopping and chop it really, really fine. Do you have a Chinese the cow chopper at home or have you used it when you were like in a China? Cleaver? Yeah, like a cleaver. Yeah, I do. Okay. You want that? <laughs> Shall we use that? I can. Sure. I still have it. I, I use it a lot. Hmm. So I realize you really actually chop very, uh, you can chop very fast with that uh, yeah, you cleaver. Can. Because the, the, the knife blade is so wide and long and yeah, Chinese, we Chinese love hmm. using it. Yeah. Wow. It is much faster with this, mm, see? Mm, yes. And meat also mm. is very fast with this. Yes. I can see. And it's very easy to work with as well. Exactly, yeah. With that, this jest. Yeah. Like your left hand slightly on the, the front edge of the knife. Yeah. Like when I was learning. so much easier. Mm -hmm. When I was learning how to cook Chinese food, yes. we always used this knife. Mm. Never used that. Yeah. I mean, we Chinese only have one knife. Yeah, it's just one. One. <laughs> we do everything with one knife. You do have a bearing knife, the small one, no? Yes, yeah. very easy, rarely. Yeah. Like normal household, they won't take out that small knife until they want to do some fancy stuff. <laughs> like daily cooking, one knife does everything. Yep. Yeah. This is a good knife though. It chops meat really well, mm. chops vegetables really well. Yes. Uh, so one of the guys I used to work with at Commune Kitchen, mm -hmm. he would always peel ginger and sliver it with this as well okay. like really really fine motor skills eh yes i wonder where he learned that he's very chinese <laughs> okay all right so this is done really yes. really finely minced yes they are like so fine you know when you eat coleslaw this is like yeah i wonder yes. how they make coleslaw though how they do they make it like this they, chop. they can chop it you can you can chop with this yeah with coleslaw you don't have to make it this fine this it's fine. just mm. uh, very thinly sliced which is actually very easy to do with cabbage because of the shape of the leaves yes true okay this is done yes all right i'm gonna pop this in a bowl over here so 120 gram of cabbage yep. finely chopped and it goes into ready it. to sweat <laughs> okay so we're gonna add some salt to this to make it sweat yes you gotta get a quarter teaspoon Mm -hmm. One fourth of a teaspoon yes. of salt. Any salt will do. Mm -hmm. And give it a good 
toss. Yeah, some use a salt that's salty. Yeah, like you use for pasta, cooking pasta. Go. So that's so got my salt here. Take about a quarter teaspoon. Oh my god, this spoon is so cute. <laughs> it's a Chinese spoon. It's a mini one. Is it? Oh, maybe sorry. There. Yeah. I don't know where I got this from. I have no idea. <laughs> and give it a good toss. Make sure the salt goes everywhere. Mm. Yeah. Yes. So you mix it. Mix the salt with the chopped cabbage. Yeah. Mixy mixy. And give it a good 10 minutes or so mm. of resting time. Yes. And after 10 minutes, we're going to squeeze all that water out. Yes. Okay. And you'll see later on that it's going to go down to like about a quarter or even less mm -hmm. in volume. Yes. Yeah. That's how much water you have. In do cabbage. we do this uh, for other vegetables in other dishes, like to remove excess water? Only if you have... Uh, a vegetable mm -hmm. with lots of water in it and only if your recipe requires it okay. you mean dumplings like dumplings or right i was thinking sometimes you add cucumber do you actually remove the some water from cucumber? in raita we yeah. don't so indian raita you keep the cucumbers uh intact mm -hmm. for tzatziki, mm, for tzatziki. Uh, in, in yes. some of the tzatziki recipes they ask to remove the, yeah yeah in mm. some of them not all of them okay. you can also have tzatziki just like raita without squeezing the water out yes but i actually prefer the grated version Mm -hmm. uh, where oh. you squeeze the water out yeah. right right okay so that's done and we, we are wait. going to 10 minutes okay to Pass. get the tofu out in the meantime so if you've got chinese tofu or if you've got tokwa get it out yes. now if you've got to tokwa which is firm tofu there's no need to extract any water out of it when you open the packet uh any excess water you can just drain into your drain yes but if you're using chinese tofu it has a bit more water in it so we're going to remove any excess water in it by placing it on a kitchen towel. Mm. Okay. Yes. So let me get that out. It's in my fridge. Mm. Uh, Paya, why do we add tofu here? Is it for the texture, for the binding? It's more moisture, I think. Mm -hmm. That's why I, I like adding tofu. And you'll see tofu in a lot of dumpling recipes. Yes. I think in vegetarian recipes, the idea is to give it some protein. Yes. And in meat recipes, it so might be to it give it uh, some moisture. moisture because... Yes. In a minute, we'll talk about how to incorporate moisture in there. Yeah. But this has a lot of moisture in it. And this will just make our dumplings extra juicy. And um, one of the reasons might also be, now I'm only guessing, okay? Mm -hmm. One of the reasons might also be so the dumpling, the filling doesn't turn into a meatball. Because if it's all meat, it's gonna it's just going to come together yeah, and become a hard meatball, right? If you add some vegetables, some tofu, it's going to give it some lightness and airiness. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Instead of tofu, or just add more they can add more minced cabbage. So just increase the amount of cabbage, add 120 grams more. So double the amount of cabbage and just do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if they've got extra chives or extra spring onion, they can add that. Mm -hmm. uh, if they've can got, they add mushrooms? They can add mushrooms. Mushrooms. Uh, Shiitake mushrooms. We generally use dried shiitake and not fresh mushrooms in dumplings. And they need soaking, so they can't exactly mm. use it now, last minute. Okay. I've got my tofu right here. I'm going to open this now. I want to remove the water. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to remove the excess water in a moment. I'll do that right here. So my bowl's here. I'm just going to squeeze that extra water mm -hmm. in there. And this is 300 grams, I suppose. And I am going to use only half. I yes. need 150 grams. Mm. All right. How many dumplings are we making with if the chicken? 30 again. 30, 30 okay. again. So we, we'll have about 60 dumplings at, in right. the end today. Uh, I have a paper towel right here. And I'm going to pop just half of it here. The other half, I'm going to leave it in here. Yes. All right. So that's done. Just cover it up and leave it on the side. Done. Okay. Easy peasy. Back to the fridge. Back to the fridge. Yes. The rest of it. Tofu is quite delicate in this sense. They really don't like heat. It can turn sour very easily. Yeah. Leave it in the fridge before it turns into... Um, stinky tofu. Stinky tofu. <laughs> Fermentation. <laughs> All right. Chemistry going on here. We've got our chicken ready. Yay. All right. If you're done with your tofu and your cabbage, give us a thumbs up so we can move on to the next step. All right? Yes, Gabby? I'm really interested in the chicken thigh. I'll take a closer look to this. You are minced chicken thigh. Wow. Yes, people, you ready? Give me a thumbs up. If you're not ready, we'll wait. All right, super. Grab your chicken thighs or your chicken mince now. Pop it in a bowl like we have. 
and grab a large spoon, a tablespoon, or a pair of chopsticks if you're comfortable using chopsticks, that mm. is, because we are going to incorporate some air in it now. Okay. Okay. To make it nice and light. I'm excited to learn this step. So I made dumplings this weekend too, and I made chicken filling too. You did? With, yes. Did you use breast? Of course I did. Okay. <laughs> of course I made that mistake. And of course I didn't know how to air. And of course it turned out tough. Was it tough? Yes. Oh yes, my God, tough. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. So uh, if you use breast, add more oil next time. Yes. And maybe add some chicken stock or something to it to make mm -hmm. it lighter. Right. Yeah. And we'll talk about that step yes. now. Okay. So you've got your chick minced chicken here, right here. You're going to start by adding some form of salt to it. Okay. Okay. And we're going to do that by adding our soy sauce mm. all right so i'm going to be adding two tablespoons of soy sauce to this and nothing else okay okay so to 240 grams of chicken start by adding two tablespoons of light soy sauce now light soy sauce is different from dark soy sauce dark soy sauce is mainly used for adding color to yes. recipes and it doesn't have a lot of salt so please don't use that use this light soy sauce this is mainly to add umami and to add saltiness all right so that's done and we are going to just bring it together first. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do this with every, every single time when you okay. make meat dumplings. Add salt or soy sauce mm. to any meats that you're using, whether it's shrimp, pork, mm. chicken, beef, it doesn't matter. Mm. Add salt or soy sauce first and then mix it in one direction yes. for about five minutes okay. until it's super sticky. Wow. Okay. One direction and one direction only. Okay. You don't want to know why some real exercise going on here. Yes, why? Why same direction? Because I like the band. One direction, not same direction. Okay. <laughs> you got that? Because it's... I like the band. <laughs> no, no, that's not the reason. So when I learned how to make, um, Gabby's still laughing at my silly joke. <laughs> Okay, so when I learned how to make dumplings, my eye taught me how to make dumplings, mm. yeah? And uh, she would always say, mix it in one direction, okay? One direction only. And I would ask her why. And she'd go, because my grandma told me so. Oh, wow. I said, no, you have we to tell to me the reason. We need grandma now. <laughs> grandma, why? And then one of my Italian friends told me that her grandmother used to do this too when she was making meatballs. Yeah. And they talk to grandmas. They know each other. <laughs> One day they call each other, they say, we're going to all tell our grandkids how to make dumplings is to make it in one direction. BFFs. Yes, and that's, the rest is history. Okay, there's actual science behind it, by the way. Okay. Okay. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> I'm joking, yes. It. So now, the amino acids in uh, um, meat, yes. when you mix them in the presence of salt in one direction, yeah. they change their structure, mm -hmm. right? And they form a grid. Mm. And this grid has little, it's, it's got little pockets of air in it. Mm. And these pockets of air are going to absorb any extra moisture that you add to your filling, making it super juicy. I see. Okay. If you and want I'm, tender meat, that's the secret. So I always do this with spaghetti meatballs. When I'm making meatballs for any other recipe, I'm making koftas, mm. uh, for shashuka, anything. I always, always do this step. And see the texture is already changing. So if, you, if you've done this like I have with all my might yes yeah it's already sticky see the structure is already changed right and at this point see it's a, it's a little pale isn't it yes yeah if, at this point if, it, if it's looking pale and you don't like the color you can add a teaspoon of dark soy sauce mm. to this recipe but it's optional yes okay. actually for dumplings we do like the feelings to be quite pale because the skin is white yeah okay yeah you don't it's like i mean the, the kind of the, the dumplings i've been always eating they're usually quite pale so personal preference yeah personal and preference. if you're feeling filling at this point looks a bit dry mm. this looks quite moist yes. see like your breast not your Thanks. breast <laughs> don't look at Julian's breast right now it's okay it's it's well covered <laughs> okay so when you make dumplings with Chicken chicken's breast. breast last week yes um and if it looked a bit dry, what you could have done is added some chicken stock at this point. Right. And given it a good a mix. So yes. then all that chicken stock gets incorporated yes. in your meat, making it juicier. Got Great. it? Yeah, I'm going to totally going to remake it. Yeah, you've got <laughs> to it all over again because we still have, yeah, this, the pastry at home. 
Okay, so we're gonna. This is done. Yes. And we're gonna start adding our other seasonings, right. and then we we'll go to the cabbage and the tofu later on. Sounds okay. great. So if you guys are done, you're gonna move on and add your seasonings now. You gotta add a good white sprinkle pepper. of white pepper. Okay. And if you like Sichuan peppercorns, yes, yeah, you can Ooh. toast a few Sichuan peppercorns, grind them in your mortar, and then just uh, push them through a sieve very quickly, and then add that too. Mm. They are amazing. Mm. Sichuan peppercorns and chicken. Sichuan peppercorns actually uplift yes, the flavor yes. in this filling. Because to me, chicken dumplings don't, don't taste like much. I like pork dumplings mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. And every time I make chicken dumplings, I always add a pinch of Sichuan peppercorn powder. Mm. But that, that's really if you like a bit of the, the mala taste, the yeah. sensation. Yeah, yeah. But the numbness on the tongue that comes from a Sichuan peppercorn. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Do they actually say mala in Sichuan? No. Uh, hua jiao. They never say mala, do they? They never yeah, use them. I don't know. I've never been to Sichuan. I've never heard the word mala in China. Mm, ma, Ever. we just say ma, yeah. yeah. Okay. So we've got sesame oil. I have chicken thighs. So I'm just going to do one teaspoon, okay, okay. of sesame oil in there. Yes. If you've got chicken breast, do a tablespoon. Yes. Because it's drier. Yes. All right. So one teaspoon. Think, yeah, I think the Sichuan people don't know what the la, the word spicy means, so they don't even talk about it. Okay, so you've got your sesame oil in there. One teaspoon if you're using thighs. One tablespoon if you're using chicken breast. All right, and then the most important ingredient. Yes. Alcohol. <laughs> Cheers, guys. So we're going to pour the entire thing in there and make it, make it drunken chicken Ooh, dumplings. So yay. add as much as you like. No. <laughs> We're going to add, this is Shaoxing rice wine from yes. Shaoxing in China. Hua Tiao Jiu. Yes. Yeah, um, I don't follow the tones, okay? So don't laugh at no, me, no. please. We're going to add Hua Tiao Jiu, uh, just one tablespoon in there. And if you want to skip that because of religious reasons, you can. Okay. Mm. So one tablespoon of Shaoxing rice wine. Yes. In there. That's done. And mix, mix, mix. Same direction. Same direction. And we've got to incorporate some. Because both Italian grandma and Chinese grandma say so. Yes. So that's better my nonna, to them. My no. nonna and my. What nai nai? Nai nai. Oh my God, it's all the same everywhere, yes. isn't it? They call each other, they decide their name, they decide. Nonna, name. Nai I wonder nai. What, what, they, and what else did they discuss <laughs> on their phone call? They discuss a lot of stuff. A lot. A lot. Okay, so we've got some herbs and spices here. Yes. I have some ginger. Okay. Yes. And I have some spring onion. Right. Okay. So. And some garlic as well. Ta -da. Okay. Garlic. So set your chicken aside. You've already added the seasoning. So you're going to add some ginger to it. Yes. Some garlic and some spring onion. All right. right. So I'm going to start with my spring onion. Get it out of the way. I've already rinsed it. Mm. Okay. And I'm going to add everything, bulbs and all. All right, bulbs and the green. Wow. Okay. I'm going to get rid of the tops, the root. And then simply remove any dirty bits mm -hmm. and then get on with chopping. Again, when I chop, I make sure I chop it very, very thinly from the very beginning. And don't over chop it mm. to keep all those lovely flavors intact. Right. So we can we are using about two stalks of spring onions. Uh, my spring onions were big. Okay. I'm using two. If yes. your spring onions are smaller, you can use three or four even. Not a problem. Good to know. And if you're using chives, you can add even more. Mm. Yes. Uh, these are stronger than chives. They, take, mm. they are oniony. Yes. Right? And what do you call garlic chives? Jiao cai ma? Jiao cai is chives. Okay. What is garlic chives? They're, they're suan seasonal. Miao, suan miao. Okay. Leek, it's a kind of leek, right? Almost. The, it, it's thinner than a leek, though. Thinner so it's, it's thinner than a western leek, no? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah, exactly. It's um it's called the baby leek. Baby leek. Like, if you okay. really translate uh literally the Chinese name. How do you say it? Suan miao. Suan miao. Okay. It's also delicious. It's like it have bulbs right at the top of that. Yes, yes. yes. That's exactly what. And those are seasonal, yes? Yes, very seasonal. Yeah, yeah. So if you can find those, those are really nice in here too. Those are great. And those are, you can make those, like replacing even the chives just now to make with the egg. It's amazing. Yes. Okay, so add all of your spring onion in there. Done. Ta -da. 
All right? Yes. Okay, and we're going to chop some garlic now. Garlic. And some ginger. Okay. We're using not much garlic. Just today. one clove of garlic. Okay. If you want to add more, you can. Okay. Yeah, I'm adding just one. Okay. I like ginger more than garlic in dumplings. I hear so. you. And that's more traditional anyway, right? I don't see a lot of people yeah. adding lots of garlic to dumplings. It's always ginger. Agree. Agree. Yeah. They add a lot more garlic in recipes in uh, the east of India, where they have a big Chinese population to, mm. to suit local taste buds. And also in Nepal... Uh, mm. Burma. Yes. Yeah. Do you momos. have recipe for momos? Yes, I was about to ask. Momos is similar to dumplings. They just mm. have more garlic. Yeah. And sometimes they even put chili Chuma inside. Chili, yes. Yeah, they put chi just, chilies inside. Yeah. yeah, I really thought momos flavors are stronger, the feeling, especially because yeah. yeah. they're more Central China. Um, no, more sorry, Western, Central Asia. Yeah, Central more Western, Asia. Central Asia. Yeah. Sorry. So Nepal mainly. Nepal, Burma. Mm. Here we go. So that's done. Make it as fine as you can. So then you incorporate all that flavor in there, yeah? Yes. That's done. And we're going to peel our ginger now. The ginger you can chop very finely or you can grate it, whatever yes. is easier for you. All right. We've got some ginger right here. I'm going to peel it using a spoon, a small spoon. Wow. Looks so easy. It is. So clean. Easy and you don't waste any. That's right. This is like a life hack. I think we're seeing more than one life hack here. <laughs> How to save your chicken breast meat. <laughs> I got that one. <laughs> here we go. So Paya, how do you celebrate the Chinese New Year? Okay, so... I went to a friend's house mm -hmm. and we did lohe together, Ooh. which is very uh, Singaporean, isn't it? They, I've never seen lohe in China when I was there. Yeah, ever. Absolutely right. Yes. So many years, never saw it. Mm. And so we did lohe together. That was fun. Got all messy. Yes. And we had, she's Cantonese. Yes. She's from Hong Kong okay. and from and part of, some part of Guangdong province. Mm -hmm. And so we uh, ate traditional Cantonese dishes. Wow. Her food was amazing. Mm. Can you share some of the dishes? Yeah, so she made a beef stew with um, uh, carrots in it. That was delicious. Beef shank, I think. Oh, yes. And then she did um, a winter melon and pork soup. Ooh. Winter melon and pork knuckle soup. It was, mm. if I remember correctly. Uh, what else was there? I took shaolong bao, so we ate that. Amazing. Of course. <laughs> yes, of course. Signature. <laughs> Ta -da, you want to know how to make shaolong bao? Come to the common kitchen. Yeah. And then what else did we have? We had a few different things for appetizers. Can't remember. But if mm. I do, I will let you know. Sure. During the course of the class. <laughs> I'm getting old. I'm getting very old. Forgetting things. Okay. This is good? Yes. Nicely minced? Yes. Once your ginger and your garlic is finely minced, transfer it into your chicken. All done. And now we're going to go back to the cabbage. If you're done chopping your ingredients, give us a thumbs up so yes. we can move on and show you what to do with your cabbage and your tofu finally. Yes. We have okay. final steps of making the chicken thing. Are we ready, Yay. people? Give people us a thumbs up us. if you're done. Wow. I see two thumbs up. If you're... Is everyone's first time making dumplings? Are you guys making dumplings for the first time? Okay. Yay, I'm I, so happy. Okay, we see a that. few thumbs up. So we're going to move on, guys, and we're going to start squeezing the cabbage. All right? Hmm. Get your cabbage over your sink. All right? So move over to your sink. Take your cabbage over to your sink. I'm going to be doing this here. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, so I'm going to take a okay. small handful of my cabbage. Yes. Sorry. And I'm going to squeeze the living daylights out of it. Ooh, squeeze. Yes. Squeeze how, as hard as you can. Ooh. Yeah, really, you can see the water. Out. Yeah, see, it basically goes down to like a quarter when you squeeze the water yeah. out, okay? And you can do this in a cheesecloth if you like, but your hand works fine. Mm, if you right. don't want to mess up a cloth, then just your hand just works just fine. Ooh, I, have you ever thought that your hand can be a juicer? <laughs> <laughs> Shall um, I give you the juice in a glass? Would you like to drink some cabbage yeah, juice, Shinya? Mm. How about you, Gabby? It's going to be salty. Cabbage juice? <laughs> Cabbage juice with salt. 
I think it's quite nutritious. Yes, gazpacho. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> For people who want detox. <laughs> hello, Rebecca. Hello. Hola, hola, Rebecca. How are you? <laughs> are you making dumplings with us, Rebecca? Yeah, I'm a bit late, so I think I'm yeah, I have cabbagey hands. Just but I'm gonna, gonna do this so I can make it later because I bought all the ingredients already. <laughs> Uh, she's lazy. She's going to be lazy. Okay. Okay. Awesome. All right. So we're almost you're going done. to love the dumplings. They are great. They're going to be so yummy. It's worth all the work. All right. So we are on the last bit of the cabbage. I'm going to squeeze Thanks. all that water out. All right. And since my hands are messy anyway, yes, I'm going to go with the tofu next. Okay. So that's done. Yes. All done. And I'm simply going to pick up my tofu that's been sitting in a paper towel, all 150 grams. And so I am something going I've to... learned too. Wow. Okay. To just mush it up. And it Such a in. good, yeah, way to incorporate tofu because last time I was chopping on a board and <laughs> making the food such a big mess. Sometimes I wonder if she's actually Chinese, this one. I wanted to. No, I'm joking. I am. Don't let my parents hear this. They will. No, I, I get a lot of comments from Chinese people saying, hey, you're more Chinese than us. No, no, you see, I'm not the only one. I feel better now. Right, so I, I do all Chinese <laughs> stuff uh, during Chinese New Year. I hand out like see packets to everyone. Yes, I to saw all that. the kids. Yes. Like every single child I know. <laughs> we have a drawer of, you prepare them. Yeah, I do actually, yeah, like my husband does. He Chinese has Santa Claus. <laughs> Oh, no, no, God of Fortune, sorry. We call Tai Sheng Ye, God oh. of Fortune. Tai Sheng Ye. He's a goddess. Yeah. Is it this guy? God. Is it this guy? No. <laughs> it's not Does this guy. No, Tai Sheng Ye is... is, is um, <laughs> Fortune Ye God is uh, quite a chubby and smiling uh, God. Okay, like, like a Buddha. Uh, not <laughs> like exactly. Like that guy? Not exactly. Yeah, 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 but I, fortune I, God. Uh, but with a bit more decorations, you know, because it's got a fortune. So lots of gold. Oh, yes. 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 Jazz. Jazz, yeah. <laughs> Buddha is much, you know, completely different. No, no, no. I'm not talking about that Buddha. I'm yeah. talking about a Chinese Buddha. Ah, the Mila huh? for. Mm, no? Just say yes. We have different, definitely many types <laughs> of God. I'm and one Buddha. of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right, so this is done. You're basically just incorporating the vegetables Ooh. and the um, tofu into your meat. Now. Okay. All right. So all the seasonings, all the ingredients are in. We're just giving them a good mix. And now I know you guys probably don't have Sichuan peppercorns. Are you guys okay with Sichuan peppercorns? Yes. Gabby? Yeah, so I'm going to add a pinch of that in here. I know you don't have it today, but it's okay. Uh, do it next time. All right. I'll show you what they look like so you know what to do with them next time, all right? I actually have some Sichuan peppercorn powder ready in my fridge. Of course you do. You're more Chinese than I am. <laughs> all right, I'll bring it over. Sichuan peppercorns are in. Mm, smells great. <laughs> it's That's raw, it. it's not cooked yet. Please do not eat, but it smells really good. Sorry, I should have taken this out earlier, but I didn't plan this oh yeah this is remember corn this is just me i think i'm doing going doing the same impromptu. direction as payel i hope oh, so I, otherwise guess I what i don't have it i know not chinese after all i finished <gasps> oh no okay let's be non-chinese a little bit okay now this is the traditional with the original the og that's yeah the og okay, okay done already la. done hala hala yay yeah let's how bang, how bang. Mm. This done, the other one also done. Love. Yes. Okay. So we're yes. going to move on and make the filling. Oh, no, not the filling. The dipping sauce now. Dipping sauce. The dipping sauce. Oh, okay. But I need to know if everyone is on task and done. So then we can move on. Yay, I see lots of thumbs up. If you guys are done, we're going to move on and make our dipping sauce now. For the dipping sauce, you guys need a knob of young ginger if you've got it. If you don't have young ginger, you just use any ginger. I've got just regular ginger that works too. But if you can find a knob of young ginger, that's even better. Young ginger doesn't have as much fiber in it yes. inside and it's sweeter. 
So it actually works really well for serving your dumplings. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just use a regular yes. ginger tea. Like the Ding Tai Fung, you see lots of like Yeah. Slivers. Like, yeah, I always like think like they must have a guy who just slices ginger. They have a Japanese mandolin. Ah, okay. Sorry. Okay. Chinese have been taken over by Japanese <laughs> tools. I I get it. <laughs> So I'm going to show you how That's to do it one by time hand. <laughs> Michelin, Michelin star, sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. So start by scraping mm. your ginger. Mm. I've got a big knob. Mm. I'm just uh, scraping what I need. Okay. Mm. So about a couple of inches. Okay. All right. Do we need this, by the way? The chilies, no. Okay. But they're so cute. They're yeah. so, so my, uh, These grow in our garden outside. My neighbor's kids, they picked them and they brought them to me and they said, here, Auntie Payal, lady fingers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> said they're chilies. You want to try them and check? No. <laughs> so smart, right? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's done. Yes. And, and I, what else do we add to the dipping sauce with the ginger? We're going to be adding some rice vinegar. Mm -hmm. We've got rice vinegar right here. Oh, that's the white one. Yeah, the we white don't one. have the white one. Uh, use the black one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Which is also a thing, by the way. This is not a joke. Black vinegar is also yeah, a thing. Yeah, yeah, I do. I Because I really don't have white vinegar at home. Use black vinegar. Thank you. Or use distilled white vinegar, vegetable vinegar. That yeah. also works. But this has a very distinct taste. Mm. I I'm actually like this. Spice. I like this more than black vinegar. Mm. Yeah, this. And then you need soy sauce. Right. And, and you need uh, lao gan ma. Yeah, the, of course. The magical, magic. Yeah, thing. the the epic auntie. The epic, exactly the epic auntie. <laughs> the chili sauce. Yeah, you right. can find every single country, every Chinatown. You will see her picture. Yes, it's amazing. she's a legend. Come on, she she's is, legendary, she right? All right, so I'm gonna slice what you need, and I am going to. Start slicing this very thinly. The rice cheese, the Chinese Coca Cola. <laughs> Good comparison. <laughs> you really like secret formula, like just one taste throughout so many years and available everywhere. Okay, so get it as thin as you can and then flat side down again. Yes. Slice thinly. Thinly, as thinly as you can. Hmm. Do you know she uh, started from her little house? Yes. And now she's like a multi-billionaire. Yes. Just selling lao gan ma. Awesome. Which is chili in oil, by the way, guys. You get several flavors, different flavors in Singapore. I usually just buy the one that says chili in oil. Then there is chili crisp in oil with a bit of fried onion, mm. I think. And then this is chili mushroom in oil. There are three or four different flavors altogether, but it tastes amazing, obviously, because it's got MSG in it. <laughs> True. Yeah, not that I'm promoting MSG or anything. But everything with MSG tastes better, doesn't it? I think a lot of times here yeah, we will don't want to say that, but we I think our, our palate just knows it. It's like, yeah. oh my god, this is so tasty. Yeah. MSG is king. <laughs> there. Okay. Yeah, also I think uh in Chinese cuisine, uh, a lot of times like when we eat out in China, MSG is really everywhere. So your your palate kind of get accustomed, accustomed to it. Yeah. When I was in it. China, you know, in cities, yes. they don't usually add it in restaurants, mm. do they? They tell you that no MSG in a lot of city restaurants in the city now, like in Shanghai. Yeah. They had it on the menu, no MSG. Yes, yes. And you can tell. Yes. All right, there we go. So as thin as you can. Right. See, totally paper thin. Yeah. And then you take a few at a time, stack them on top of each other like this. Yeah, ja. Yes. And then you slice as thinly as you can again into mm -hmm. slivers. Okay, ma? Okay. Done. That, yeah, I think I'm that's gonna, enough now. Is it though? Uh, never enough for me. Okay, more ginger. So I'm going to do a little bit more because it's five of us eating today and we're going to fight over ginger. So. Okay, I will. I, I won't. I won't fight with you, but yes, others. I love would. ginger. Oh, good. I think it's really good in it's many good ways. Yeah. yeah, it's 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 great for your digestion. Mm. It's great for your stomach. So good for you. Yes, and it tastes so amazing. Mm. Ginger tea is one of my most favorite things too. Yes, yeah. so good when you have feel like you're gonna fall sick. 
And then you just have a warm cup of ginger. And honey. And yes. honey, yes. Or brown sugar. Okay, so you don't need as much as I'm chopping now. <laughs> it's like a mini mountain <laughs> of ginger. But that's okay. But it's okay. If just, you like ginger. Yeah. So um, at Din Tai Fung, we usually like put a little bit in everyone's bowls, right? Like yes. This, yeah. So this is actually enough for like five or six people. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, but we're I am pa- not going to serve it. We're like not typhoon, typhoon, but we are pile typhoon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're gonna put this in a bowl and do this pile typhoon style. Sauce, yes. Okay. I'm gonna put this all in a bowl, and I'm gonna pour the sauce over this and give my ginger some time to pickle. Okay. Great I'm idea. gonna grab a bowl quickly. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So then grab the a bowl, people. Grab a bowl. All right, this, we need the vinegar, whatever color you have, the soy sauce and Nagama, yeah. legendary chili sauce. Yeah, legendary auntie's chili sauce. Auntie, there. yeah. There. Does anyone know her name? Do you know her name? We gotta find out. Mm, we should. Okay, so get your soy sauce ready and get about a third of a, no, about a third of, get your third of a cup measuring cup. Okay, so one third, of a cup, grab that. If you don't have a measuring cup that says a third on it, you take about 80 ml mm. of light soy sauce and put it in here, 80 ml, eight zero, okay? I have a third of a cup, so I'm gonna grab that. I'm super lazy when my heart just eyeball everything for the sauce. <laughs> like, okay, I feel like having more soy sauce. More. Yeah, you can do that on the table, but yeah. if you're doing this for the first time, Right, right. Yeah, it's good to no, give no, people definitely measurements. Follow, yes. Yeah. So one third of a cup of light soy sauce. This is a third of a cup, 80 ml. All right. Next, we're going to add some vinegar. I'm adding about two and a half tablespoons of rice vinegar. Yeah, you can also taste the sauce. Yeah. Maybe as after you, you just along, add, yeah. as you go along. Yeah, if you don't like too acid, maybe uh, put a little bit of vinegar. There. If you like, really like. Uh, strong, pungent, then yeah, feel free to add a little bit more. Okay, so two and a half tablespoons yes. of, of vinegar. Now, some people like to add sesame oil and oh. some spring onion at this point. Okay. I'm not going to add sesame oil today because uh, lao ganma has oil in it and it's just going to get very oily. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to add a teaspoon of lao ganma in here or chili oil, mm. chili in oil. Don't use the oil, just scrape the chili from the bottom and put that in. Okay, about a teaspoon. And if you're allergic to peanuts, please don't use this. A lot of times it has peanuts in it. Allergic That's to right. MSG, please don't eat it. Oh, you know why. <laughs> <laughs> At least the next day, you know, it's this legendary anti sauce. <laughs> okay. That contributes. Yeah. So this is done. Ooh. And this I can That's actually eat with sauce. anything and everything. Yes. I love this sauce so much that I often make noodles. Ooh. And, uh, and just, just pour this on pour top. This on top. Yeah, Excellent. yeah. Okay. This spring onion done. Done. Okay. Okay. That's done. That's we yeah set aside. Okay. Set it aside, and we are going to move on and start making our dumplings now. Yes. I'm just gonna flip my board over so we can start placing our dumplings Magic. here. Don't wash. <laughs> <laughs> Another life hack. <laughs> All right, so if you're done, give us a thumbs up. If you're not done, we'll wait for you. Okay. I want to go wash my hands. Yes. I want to help. Give us a thumbs up if you're done so we can move on. Awesome. All right, get your pastry out, guys. Get your pastry out of the fridge. Open it up. And get a wet towel ready, a wet tea towel ready, and keep it covered. We're going to start removing the pastry one at a time okay you want to try as well yes i do okay i just want to yeah and we head. also need a bowl full of water maybe half full of water because this pastry comes out of the fridge and so it's very dry you got to seal the edges using water okay so grab another one shinyan yes if you uh you be, remember we set this aside earlier the egg and chai filling Give it a toss as well to make sure it's cooled down nicely. Get rid of the bigger spoons. I'm going to get rid of my big spoons and I am going to grab two small teaspoons for this. Okay. So we've got the two fillings right here. 
Don't take them all out at once. They will dry out. Okay. So we'll take them out one at a time. All right. Yes, chef. Sorry to tell you off. No, no, it's good. Yeah, we've got one filling, two filling. We've got some water in a bowl. Are you ready? Get Are some you water ready? ready in a bowl also. Okay, so you've got the two fillings ready. You've got two small spoons ready in your bowls. You need water. This is for sealing the yes. edges. And you also need a tea towel, a clean tea towel to keep your dumplings covered at all times. Okay. Because otherwise they're going to dry out. Yes. It's very important to keep them covered yeah. at all times. So grab a tea towel as well. All right, and we are going to get started. One, about a tablespoon mm. of filling, okay? At a time, mm. we're gonna put some water along the edge first. Yes. Fold it over. Yes. Now the easiest way would be to, to just seal the edges like this, like children, child's play. Okay. Yeah. And then once you've sealed the edges already, just push it down, make it sit. Okay. Because this needs to go in a steaming basket, right? Yeah, they will be sitting in the basket. Yeah, so you need to make sure they're sitting nicely. Right. If they sit nicely on your board, they're going to sit nicely in your sure. basket. Okay, we're going to put some in the basket. I'm going to show you hmm. now. So they sit and that's very, you know, it's like all closed up on the two sides. Yeah. I have my basket ready. Make sure your basket has this underneath. Oh, please poke holes. Yeah, poke holes. You can buy this from the markets here. So if you bought, if you bought your steaming basket already, I also wrote down in the ingredients and the equipment mm. list to buy paper liners, breathable yeah. paper liners. If you haven't got them, you need to cut it out the same size as your yes. steaming basket and poke holes in it. Or you can put leaves, cabbage. Put cabbage leaves. Yeah. Cabbage leaves also. You, you don't want the dumplings to stick on the bamboo. Yeah. Yeah. So this is this sits nicely. We're gonna keep this covered. Like I said, always, always keep them covered at all times. Okay. All right. Awesome. Okay. Moving on. Let's yes, do another one. You. Go on then. No, no. You no, should. Okay. You I can show. take another one. No, no. I have you. You take. Okay. This. So we're gonna do another one now. This time, I'm gonna show you how to do pleats. So we're gonna take uh, about a tablespoon of the filling. All right. Water along the edge. Okay. If you think your fillings, uh, you can't accommodate so much filling in there, add a little bit less. That's fine too. Mm. Okay. Now with dry hands, you're going to start pleating. Yes. I'm going to show the easiest way to do this for people who are not Chinese. The Chinese usually go backwards like mm. this. I'm going to do it the white way. Okay. Which is simply pushing your finger, your, fi your index finger inward toward the center and pleating. Push it in and pleat yeah. like this. Okay. And the same on the other side. Push it in, pleat, push it in, and pleat. Yay, so okay, nice. And that's done. Look how deep the pleats are. Wow, okay. very nice. Hala. Hala. So that's one done. All right. Okay, and we're going to place this again right behind this guy over here. Make sure they're social distancing. Correct. Okay, because otherwise they're going to expand and get stuck to each other. Also keep them away from the wall slightly. Okay, so about a thumb in between and keep, start stacking them behind each other. Mm. We're going to do a few more. Actually, we have to do them all, don't we? Yes. And we'll show them slowly. If you think you, the filling is too much, you can't accommodate a tablespoon, add a little less, that works too. It really depends on the size of your pastry. And get the filling in the middle, not along the edges, yeah? Fold it over and... Pleat using your index finger and your thumb. Pleat with your right, pinch with your left. All right, and do the same on the other side now, this time pleating with your left and pinching with your right. Pleat with your left and pinch. Make it sit like it's sitting on a sofa. Ooh, right, and done. Did you get that? She's doing it the Chinese way. You did it the other way, didn't you? Yes, I did. All right, we're going to place this in our bamboo basket and continue on with the rest of our dumplings. That looks beautiful. Okay. All right, let's keep going. How is everyone doing with the pleats? You can even stretch out your pastry a little bit to make it slightly bigger, see? 
because this is a very thick pastry, no? Yeah, it's really nice. It's very soft. Mm. Okay, we're going to do all the chicken dumplings first. I like doing that because then I know what I'm eating. Yes. Yeah. Or maybe we can do one basket with chicken and the other with... Mm. Uh, so we, are, we, we have this like kind of traditional... Uh, fun index thing. finger in. Yep. Pleat, pinch, pleat, pinch. Same on the other side. Okay, go on then. So I was just saying that... Um, like we also like to add like a surprise mm -hmm. uh, in the in, in the some of the dumplings, right? Like the uh, to see like the kids especially love this because um then they can uh they feel very special. Gold gold coin. Some people put money, literally like coins, mm -hmm. uh, and and of course they wash it and they use like it's a special money that they only use for dumpling. Yeah, gold coin. No coin. Yeah. Or like I mean. We can put dates, we can put raisin, can put like maybe a lotus seeds, like some some something, a peanut, mm -hmm. something that you can dis distinguish that, oh, you got a special one. You got the lucky dumpling. Lucky dumpling, yeah. exactly. So if you have anything that like a peanut something, feel free to add it. For can fun. we do that? Yeah, we can. Okay, so let's let's pleat some more. Guys, use your index finger. Pleat like you would pleat a skirt. Mm -hmm. And then keep pleating and pinching. Same mm -hmm. on the other side. Pleat and pinch and move towards the center. The I put time. too much. So if you put too much, right? Just put, take it out. Yeah, take it out. Don't try to, I won't recommend to force closing it because you regret. <laughs> yeah, it's not going to close. <laughs> yes. Okay. And keep them covered, okay? If you're not doing it in a bamboo basket, please put them on a tray or on your board and keep them covered using a, a towel because the edges will dry out and they won't be nice to eat. I'm going to grab some peanuts. Yes, let's okay. do that. I've got raisins, so I've got I, peanuts. I do the back way. This way. Right. I use my... So I use this so I make sure that the, the, the seal is, is good. And yeah, that's why I put a bit too much. So kind of regrets now. <laughs> Have to remove some. Okay, here we go. We're going to remove some of the peanuts here. Okay. Is that enough? Awesome. We needed just one, didn't we? No, no, we need a few so that there's more than one special ones. Otherwise, everyone will be fighting. Like, yeah. everyone else will want to eat at least 30, like 20 dumplings who can eat the fastest to get the yes. special, the lucky one. And we all know how competitive um, Gabby can get, right? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. All right. So stretch it out if you can. Make it slightly thinner. Filling in the middle. I'm going to put my special peanut in there. Yay. Okay. Remember, remember, this is a special one. Okay. <laughs> and water and seal. Okay. Stick the seal, pinch the top first. And then pleat with your right, pleat with your right, pleat with your right. I've done three pleats on this one and three on the other side. Again, do it with your index finger in the middle. And ta-da! Do we have any questions? How's everyone doing? Can we see? So this is what the basket looks like right now, people. Here. Yeah, let's see. Okay, let's see one of your dumplings, guys. Pick it up. Bring it in front of the camera so we can see what you've been up to. Oh, I can see, I can see. You can see Cohen. Yay, awesome. very I'm nice. Done. Good job, guys. Big dumpling. How about Larry's? Can we see it? My dumpling is like this because oh, I have only squares. Uh, that's a, a triangle, like a uh, samosa. <laughs> it's going to be like samosa. <laughs> But do you have some strategy to make it? Oh, she got the square? wonton wrappers, right. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah. Can, can you do it out of square one, the same uh, pleating? They look like yellow wonton wrappers. Yes. The dough is what? Square. Yeah, the pastry is square. Oh. It's square. The it's square. Okay. Ah, interesting. Just cut it. <laughs> <laughs> Just trim it to make it circular. <laughs> It's okay. You know what? In the end, they're all going to taste the same. 
I think it's a wonton pastry, the, yeah. the square one that you use for shiomai. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. Okay. All right. So we keep pinching, pleating, pinching, pleating, pinching. Remember, just pleat one side, not both sides. Okay. So this is one of the biggest mistakes people make when they're pleating dumplings. They tend to pleat both the layers mm. and not just one layer, making the seal very thick. Mm. Okay, that's done. This basket is full. We're going to do another basket now with our egg and chives. Awesome. Now, okay. Let's switch. Now see how this pastry, or this filling is very sticky mm. and it's so much easier to Close it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But this one's gonna stretch go everywhere. A bit, yeah. Yeah. So be careful and make sure you stretch out your pastry a little bit. All right. I'm gonna take about a tablespoon in there. Again, it's actually not too bad. It's wet. It's water on one side, pinch the middle, and pleat pinch, pleat pinch, pleat pinch. And if you're having trouble pleating, that's okay. Just use the simple sealing technique. Okay? You don't have to make fancy pleats to do this because in the end, they all taste the same. Here we go. Done. Keep them covered. This is to know this is green. This is Asian chance. What? Hi. <laughs> um, Miss Chive. <laughs> okay, stretch. Making dumplings is very therapeutic, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, you're so focused in it. Yeah. And it's kind of really good a sense of a chip after you make it. And you're going to eat it. I'm very hungry now already. I'm getting hungry too. And the good thing is really you can do it as a family. Everyone can help out, help out. Yeah. I hope you guys are doing this with your family. Because dumplings are to be made with the family. Or friends. Yeah, or friends. Or friends, yes. Okay. Pleat, 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 pinch, 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 done. Yeah, we should really have more like dumpling making party, like small groups. You know, that's what people at my classes do, the ones. Oh, yeah. So uh, my older students who don't have children here mm -hmm. anymore, the mm -hmm. empty nesters, yes. they do this with friends. Very nice. Mm -hmm. They come to the class with friends and then they end up making dumplings at each other's houses with yes. friends. Yes. So then they have enough to uh, freeze as well because dumplings freeze really well, even if the a pastry is uh, pre-frozen. Yeah, 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 definitely, yes. Yeah, this is, these can go in the freezer for up to three months. Yes. Yeah. All you need to do is just stack them on a tray, put the whole lot in the freezer for about two hours until they're rock solid on the outside. And once they are solid, you can bag them up and put them away in the freezer for up to three months and take them out any time you like. And frozen dumplings do not need to be thawed before they're cooked. Yes. You can put them directly into the steamer, frozen, and cook them for two minutes longer than you would regular dumplings. Mm. Today, we're cooking these for 10 minutes. If these were frozen, we'd cook them for 12. I see. Okay. And this is going to be steamed. We'll also see if we have enough time to pan fry some dumplings and make gyozas today. Nice. Okay. Gabby, can you see how many people uh, do they have actually making dumplings and if they have help in the kitchen? I see two people. Okay. And I see people waving. <laughs> Actually, for Larry's, I was thinking, right, because you have the square wrappers, uh, it can fold into half like a rectangular shape, right? You put the filling in the middle, you wrap the two edges, you close it up to become a rectangular shape. Yeah, a rectangular shape would actually sit better. And then, and then... She's the raising two... her eyebrows. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. And then <laughs> on the two edges of the rectangular, you try to close them. Let's, let's show her, shall we? Let's make a rectangle here. Hold on, we'll show you. All right, so what are you trying to say? Okay. She has squares right now. You have squares, right? After that, you fold into half. So they are rectangular, right? And then afterwards, you do this. Um, it's a bit, okay, do you want to do it? Just, just do it. And then you do like this. Or like a wonton. Like a wonton, yeah. 
oh yes yes so do what you're doing you've got your you know you've got actually she can do that with a triangle as well just bring the edges. exactly oh wait just wait, wait, wait. It, yeah wait, oh, i show her i know i know what you mean yep. now i get it let me show you here okay i'm gonna put these down and do a wonton right here okay so you know you've got your square right you make your square dumpling as you are, not a problem. And then you put the water along the edge like this, and then you fold it over and you make your rectangle, right? And then you basically put some water along the edge, along yes. the corner here and bring the corners together. Yes. And that way you have a wonton, wonton. How pretty that is. Yeah, see, done. All right, this also works. Does that solve the problem? Yeah. Thumbs up. Yay. Okay. Awesome. You are brilliant. Did you go to business school? <laughs> <laughs> Happened to, but I don't think. <laughs> yeah, that was very quick uh, strategic thinking. I'm thinking I like what it. we can do with the square ones. We need to make the lucky ones. Yeah, some peanuts in there to make them lucky. I'm going to add two because they're so small. I'm afraid the person who ate it and did doesn't won't even know. Tell. Yeah, no, I'm not telling the person that he or she's a lucky person. Then won't that be sad? Just don't break your teeth eating those peanuts. The rest of the filling is quite soft. Yeah, there you go. I'm so hungry. I want to eat the peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you can. We won't tell. We're just live everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't Are tell. Are we on though. Instagram as well today? No? We are? What? Really? One hour up already, that's why. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Okay, I think we're almost done with the with the basket. Yep. Yeah. Okay, fold it over and pleat, pleat, pleat on both sides. You know, I thought this class was going to be short, but it's actually not. Yeah, I thought so too. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it's just two fillings and a piece of cake. <laughs> I didn't even start prepping until these ladies arrived today because <laughs> I do this so often. Yeah. There. Okay, this is full. Okay. We're going to pop these over here now. All right. Behind one, so behind one another, and I will get my tea towel going. Here's yeah. your peanut. Thank you. And we are going to cover these up. Yep. So do that, people. Keep them covered. And we are making, we'll finish these, then move on to the chicken ones later, okay? Okay. Let's do a row of green ones and then the chicken ones. Uh, do you know how to make curry puffs? Yes, curry puffs are so easy. Okay. Do you want to make curry puffs at the next class? Yes, at one of the classes. At yeah. one of the classes. Shall we do curry puffs, people? At one of the classes? Would that be cool or what? Do we get thumbs up? Do we get no? No. Curry puffs are deep fried though. Not many people oh. like the idea of deep fried food right. these days. Curry puffs are uh, the perverted child of uh, samosas, you see. Really? Yeah. So where do you think they came from? Pina. From India. <laughs> <laughs> Everything originates from India. Sorry. Or China. <laughs> and, Oops, I think we just opened and them, we, like, the like. Where do you think pasta world. came from? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying anything here. <laughs> Come on. No, no, I'm not saying anything here. <laughs> My kids actually make fun of me. They say my our mother actually thinks everything originated in either China or India. Because you know, we are the oldest civilizations in the world. Yeah. Where do you think French food came from, Gabby? Gabby will say France. <laughs> the China. The. <laughs> oh no, this is so ugly. I tried too many please. Yeah. 
Okay. Oh, peanuts, peanuts. Just keep going, keep going. Make them sit. Come on. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are more, you know, like chill. They kind of want to have lounge. <laughs> you're like you're gonna make me like sit in the fridge or freezer for three months i gotta make myself comfortable <laughs> that's funny <laughs> yay <laughs> yeah sometimes i'll make joke and i'll ask cats so i'm like am i funny am i funny <laughs> she would be so annoyed like how many times do you want to ask Okay, let's try to do smaller pleats this time. Mm. Some small ones, three, four. Five, I want to six. finish all the fittings into this. Uh, you this can't one. fit it all in, it's too yeah. much. You yeah, can right. do another two with that. <laughs> stubborn, stubborn, what can I say? Okay, with more pleats. This so time. I like to eat. Dumplings with lots of fillings. Yeah, the more the filling, the better, no? Yeah. You know, um, pan fried dumplings and steamed dumplings aren't very common at home. Most people just boil dumplings at home, like ravioli or tortellini yep. in Italy. Yep. At home. Yeah. 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 I I don't remember steaming. I didn't even have a steamer in China when I lived yeah, there. Yeah. I used to boil them all the time. Yeah. Chinese. Just always boiled dumplings. Yes. That's good. Always boiled. Okay, let's do, you're done with that, right? Yes. Okay, so. I can do this. Xin Yang is finishing off our last dumpling, our last five dumpling, and I'm going to be doing my. Jiu cai ji dan. Dui. My ji ru da jiao zu. Have you tried making like a hybrid version? Yeah. So whenever you have leftover fillings, right? Yeah. Two leftover fillings. Yeah. You put them together and you call that the surprise dumpling. Can I give you some because Anna is going to explode? Yeah. So we are going to... <laughs> we're going to have a surprise dumpling tonight. Okay, no, sorry. This is finished. We have a few surprise ones, but this is the biggest surprise because look. No good. No good. Okay, this one's done. Hold on. No good. I can eat it like this, like a tacos. <laughs> yeah, chai with egg tacos, yum. On the raw, uncooked dumpling skin. <laughs> well, I will have to like pay the doctor a visit or something. Okay. Give on. Yi How the? You speak Mandarin, right? Yes. I need to practice my Mandarin with okay. someone. Can okay, I don't you? take everything. Like, can it's I enough, call you? Enough. Can Give I like, call you every day? To speak, of course, practice of course. my Mandarin because yeah. I'm actually forgetting my Mandarin. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. Please call me. Please yeah. do. Yeah, actually, my Mandarin sometimes people are like, mm. So I'm, I'm trying <laughs> yeah, you to... I'm trying... <laughs> <laughs> but in the meantime, we can practice. People are mean here. Like, hey. I went to my... I went to my neighbor, right? Yes. I took her bao the other day. Oh, bao wow. Yeah, I went, I went nice to my neighbor and I gave her bao for the kids, right? Yeah. And the little girl who was just here a few minutes ago, she's seven. I gave it to her. Yep. And I said, well, give me bao And she looked at me and she goes, Auntie Payo, it's not bao it's <laughs> bao <laughs> I'm sure it tastes delicious, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. And how do you feel? Uh, awful. Oh, okay. Insulted. Put everything here. Okay, this is the... This they're is always trying one. to correct me. Yeah, but they're right. It's bao zi. It's a bao zi. <laughs> is it? Ooh. It's bao zi. It's okay. a zi. Friends, let's make it right <laughs> once and for all. It's bao zi. It's bao zi. There, it's not bao zi. There, bao zi. <laughs> What feeling was that? What it's do you not, put it's in? not bao zi, it's bao zi. Say it again? Bao zi. Like bao zi? Bao. 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 First, okay, it's, first it's accent. Bao okay, okay. <laughs> Yes. I'm more interested in what you put in the bao zi, actually. Uh, 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 what did I put in the bao zi? Pork. Pork. Minced pork. pork. 
Minced yes. pork, carrots. Yes. Oh, okay. Carrots and onions sauteed with garlic. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, chicken stock mm-hmm. to make them juicy. Yes. And mix, mix, mix like nana. Oh. Right? And nai nai. <laughs> okay, let me see if I have some in the freezer. I actually do, I think. Ooh, wow. Unless Marissa ate them all. Marissa, did you eat all the, all the baozi? No. Oh, that means we have some. <laughs> We can eat some, yeah? No, she just ate the baozi, but she didn't eat the baozi. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see what we have. How's everyone doing? We're having so much fun. Yeah, we can do baozi as well. Sometimes the baozi, sorry. <laughs> Laris, how are you doing, Laris? All good? How are your wontons coming along? Oh, wow, nice. That's very nice. Well done. What do you do? Cut it? We should use the, the magic you taught. Okay, okay then. You're on mute. Can you... Can you... Yeah, no. Unmute yourself and yeah, tell us. I'm just trying to do the same fleeting. It doesn't work every time, but I'm trying. <laughs> No, she's trying. It doesn't work every time, she's trying. Yay. Okay, super, super. <laughs> so Glad happy. we figured this out. I think I want to, I want to save a few for, for Gabs to try later. Can we? Yeah. Do you want to come, Gabs? I think she's a bit mm-hmm. occupied now, yeah. Okay. Later, okay. later. Okay, can, can. We still have a lot, though. We need to finish what we have. Yeah, we can. Yeah, and I I'm know people dumpling, are still doing I'm them. a dumpling making machine. Come on. Yes, you are. No, I just invented it. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I can rise up to the challenge. You know, with kids around, this is so much faster. My kids used to uh, fold them so fast, I couldn't keep up with the rolling Really? Process. My kids are so good at folding dumplings. Oh, my God. Both my children. So my son, I don't remember if I... If I told you this, my son actually called me a couple of months ago. Yes. And he said, mom, I miss your dumplings. It's locked down here. I can't get dumplings anywhere. Can you send me the recipe, please? Oh, wow. So I sent him the recipe. Poor guy couldn't find a rolling pin mm-hmm. and only realized that he needs a rolling pin to roll the pastry out. Yes. Uh, last minute after he made the dough. Oh, oh. And so he did it with a bottle of wine. Ah, smart. Yeah. And he froze the leftovers and he enjoyed his dumplings for a month after. Oh, my God. That's so nice. Yeah, it's so convenient. Yeah. He's been he's been he's been cooking a lot. He didn't cook at all, so I didn't teach him how to cook much before he left. Yes, but uh, during lockdown, he's been cooking a lot more. And uh, yesterday, he made a couple of days ago, he made butter chicken. Oh wow! From the website, yes. So we've got a YouTube video as well. Yes, uh, on butter chicken on my latest recipe. Yeah. And he watched it and he made I'll check it. it out too. Yeah. yeah, and he sent me a message saying, "Mom, the butter chicken." from your website was exquisite oh and i've never felt this happy i mean you know my customers text me all the time yes. this is the first time my son texted me yes. and said that to me and i felt so proud of mm. him and of course yeah he yeah and i i didn't realize he had it in him it's wonderful i thought my daughter was the cook and the baker in the family mm-hmm. the baker and cook in the family mm-hmm. But apparently, Nayan's really good at it too. And he really, really enjoys it. It's therapy for him. Mm. It's such a great skill, people. Teach your kids how to cook. Bring them into the kitchen with you. I didn't cook, I didn't cook much with him. We used to make dumplings mm-hmm. uh, when he was younger. But other yes. than that, I don't remember him cooking much. But I, as and when he comes now, mm. he helps out a little bit. So then he knows a few mm. basics. And he's got the book. He's got the cookbook as well. So Yes. Do you have a favorite dish in the cookbook? Or top three? Top three. Okay. Because I will start with that. I have your cookbook too. We haven't cooked something yet. Okay. Uh, I like butter chicken. Yes. But it's a difficult one to follow. So mm. don't ever start with that. Okay. okay. <laughs> Good. I don't know what to start. I, don't, I know which one not to start with. So there are lots of Thai recipes in there. Yes. There's one Thai shrimp with asparagus that mm. we learned here as well. Yes. That's super easy to yep. do. You can start with that. Okay. If you want to do a, a curry, like yep. an Indian curry. Yes, yes. I love Indian curry. Well, then do a chicken masala. Okay. Or there's a, there's a, there's a balti chicken in there. 
There's chicken jalfrezi. Yes. Those are easy ones. So start with those first. Yes. Once you're more comfortable with the spices, know the names and, you know, get used to the process. Mm. Because Indian food is super easy. Yeah. To do if you've got the spices. And That's there are right. just a few basic spices you need box. in the kitchen. Yeah, that you have that you use every time. So there's a there's a uh, local company here. Yes. Called the Indian Spice Box. Have okay. you heard of them? No. Indian, the Indian Spice Box, they source their spices from the south of India and they're okay. all organic, sustainably sourced. Ooh. And uh, the product is amazing. Mm. All right. So maybe you just get a box from them. Just yeah. go on indianspicebox.com and get their spices. Good idea. You don't need mine. I actually get theirs. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And some of the spices I make at home. So I never buy garam masala. You make your own. Yeah. I make my own garam masala. Uh, I have a recipe in the book if you want to do it from scratch. But uh, other than mine, the Indian spice box is the only one I recommend oh, wow. in Singapore. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for the tip. Here we go. Keep going. How are, how's everyone doing? Are they almost done? Guys, if you're almost done, let us know. Yeah. Oh, I see thumbs up. Looks like they're done already. Yep. Nice. Okay. So while I think we can uh, the is that it? What you can do is grab a wok now, grab a wok or a frying pan, pan, add about three cups of water to it. All right. Grab a wok or frying pan, add three cups of water to it. Put it on the stove top on medium to high flame and bring the water to a boil. If you use a lid, uh, heat's going to build up and your water is going to come to a boil faster. So do that if you want to. I'm going to grab my wok yep. and get it going, okay? Now start steaming the dumplings. And we also need to deep fry some, so. Okay. Not okay. deep fry, pan fry some. Yeah, let's, let's continue this later. Okay, so... And we need one more wok for frying wok or frying pan to fry your dumplings, to pan fry them. Let's do, let's bring the water to a boil first. Yes. I've got about three cups of water here. Okay. Switch it on. I'll get a lid. All right, make it highest so it's easier. Boy. Yeah, okay. So this is going to take a few minutes. In the meantime, we're going to get started with our fried dumplings as Yay. well. Okay. So now that you know what's happening here, I'm going to transfer this to my gas hub and I'll show you what to do with this. So let the water come to a boil. And at the same time, grab another frying pan or wok if you've got it. And we're going to be frying some dumplings at the same time. If you're ready to do, do that, give us a thumbs up or we'll wait for you. Let's transfer this, shall we? Guys, are you, if you're ready to do that, give us a thumbs up so we can move on. All right, super. Okay. All right, let's, let me transfer this quickly and grab another frying pan. I'll be right back to just going to wash my hands. Okay, now you also need. Yes, do we have a question? Oh yeah, yeah, we're coming back soon. Okay, so you need a. Okay, here we go. Fry. Yep, so I've got a flat frying pan or you can use a wok if you like either works yes. you just need to make sure that you have a lid yes yeah and we're going to add some water later we'll be adding water later which is why you need a lid that fits properly i'm just going to check yeah this one fits better perfect the other one. Yep. Okay. Um, make sure 
Your pan is nice and hot. Get some oil ready as well. I've got some vegetable oil here. You can use vegetable oil, olive oil, doesn't matter. Any oil will do, okay? My dumplings are all ready here. Okay, some ready for steaming in here. These ones will go on the boiling water later on once it comes to a boil, all right? And the ones that I have been sitting, that have been sitting here. Or on lounge, my, eh? Yeah, on my lounge. Yes, super chill. Yeah. Having some cocktails. Yes, right here. See that, that yeah. one? Oh, no, social distancing, hello. <laughs> PM Lee is not going to be happy about this. <laughs> no. There. Let's not tell him. There. All right. So keep them covered. Get your pan nice and hot first and smoke in. Hot like Xin Yan. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and then get a tablespoon ready. And then you're going to pour a tablespoon of oil into your spoon. This is olive oil, by the way. And that's okay. That's okay. We love olive oil. And pour but you can it. use any vegetable oil. Any, any oil would do. Yeah. Because you're just pan frying here. All right. And now, as you can see, my pan isn't exactly flat, right? So what I'm going to do is, and this might be the case with you guys as well, if you're using a frying pan to do this. I'm going to pop it on the side and then you're going to move it. To the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like how you did for the chicken as well the last time. Yes. Yeah, this is such Just a good to get trick. some oil going in there, yeah? yeah. And I'm going to try to fit good. it. So you can use this tiny as well when you fry dumplings. I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to send a picture to my dad later. This, he loves uh, pan fried dumplings. He does? Yeah, I, I don't know how to make it, so I never made that. Before. Really? Yeah. Bought here. Bought here, yes. Yes. I need a little more oil on this side, yeah? Yep. So with induction hubs, they're a little funny, right? Because the outside takes longer to cook compared to the inside. Mm. The inside always burns. Because I'm using an induction hob today, I'm not going to put anything in the middle. If you guys are doing this on a gas hob, you can, you know, cover up the entire space. Just leave a little bit of space in between the dumplings so they don't get stuck to each other. Okay. You're going to do this for about a minute or two. The first time when you do this, because your pan is not hot enough, it takes a little bit longer. Mm. Okay. And you're basically what you're doing is you're crisping up the bottom. Yes. Okay. Uh, the Japanese do gyozas the same way as well. Yes. Okay. See here, it's getting there, but slowly. Mm. All right. I'll keep the rest of them covered. Yeah. So one thing to differentiate also because the chai's one is just darker in color. So actually quite good at kind of tell which is good. what. Oh, did, did I mix them up? Yeah. It's okay. Okay. Well, you know what? After they're cooked, you will be able to tell even more. Yes. Because dumplings, oh. they change color. They become translucent. That's right. That's how you, that's how you actually know they're done. Yes. Yeah. Oh, otherwise I'll take a bite and you tell you. <laughs> you <laughs> for each bite. dumpling. That works. <laughs> that works too. Okay, let's check on this side. It's taking a little bit longer on my stovetop, not hot enough. And my pan is very, very thick. It's French. If your pan is thinner and not as heavy, they won't take this long. Yeah. So yours might actually be done. They, if they're crispy brown at the bottom already, reduce the heat, please, straight yeah. away so they don't burn. Mine are taking a little bit longer than usual today. All right. I'm also going to get some water ready. Mm, yes. So get a bowl of water ready because you're going to be adding water to this very soon. This is so pretty. Fence. Bowl fence. of water ready, people. Make sure your dumplings are brown at the bottom. If they're already brown, this is what you're going to do. You're going to reduce the heat and you're going to add exactly three tablespoons of water in there. So let's check. Don't touch them. Don't do what I'm doing because this is crazy <laughs> stuff. Yeah. They're getting there slowly, see? Mm. And like I said, the middle is always hotter. Let me just move them slightly to the middle to make my make this slightly faster. On the other side, you want to check if the water is boiling? boiling. Yeah, please. And if your water uh, in the wok has come to a boil, I'm going to show you what to do next. Yes, it quickly. has come to a boil. Okay. We're gonna, let's finish this chinian very quickly and then move on. Okay. Coming. So I think this is ready. Nice and brown at the bottom and crispy. I'm going to add, I'm going to reduce the heat to low. And I'm going to add one 
two and three tablespoons of water and cover it straight yes. away. Cover, cover it straight away and make sure your, your heat is on low now. All right? Yep. And set a timer for five. Yep. Okay? Set a timer for five minutes and we we'll go minutes. back to this in five. Yep. So, okay, so this is on 100 degrees now, so okay. on low heat. And we're going to go back to this in five minutes. Let's move to I'm the other to side. Yep. And we're going to take our basket over. Ta da! To follow our water that's yep. come to a boil. Okay, over here. Woohoo! Okay, you're going to lift the lid up and you're going to very carefully, without burning your fingers, you're going to place your basket in there and set a timer for 10. Okay? Good. We'll go back to this in 10 minutes. Okay. All right. I'm going to set a timer for us. Yes. And we are going back to our pan fried dumplings. Okay. The pan fried dumplings will be done soon as well. And we're going to get ready to lay them. Okay. The dumplings are going to get laid soon. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky. <laughs> All right. And you've got our dipping sauce as well. Yes. I'm going to get some nice plates. Oh my out. God, I can't wait to try it. I'm so hungry. I am so hungry. Yeah, because last time we made uh, uh, dumplings too. We made, uh, I think we used in Omni. Omni. Yeah. Yes. You can yeah. also, uh, if you want another variation to vegetarian filling, you can try the Omni meat. It was very good. We have the recipe in your right app. Um, yep. Yeah. Just type Omni meat or type dumpling, you'll find it. Okay. So I was getting bowls so get a bowl get a bowl ready people mm -hmm. for your dipping sauce yes. and get a nice flat plate ready mm -hmm. to get your gyozas out gyozas go tie jiaozi go tie go tie yeah gotie. sorry yeah go tie yeah, they're definitely more chinese than i am yeah. it's, it's called go tie well, go tie i may say that um yes this one i may yeah. say all the this is the that's dumplings. the only one yeah the only one steam or pan fried yeah right here So I may get all the tones wrong, but I know my words in Chinese. Definitely. Here we go. So I've got my dipping okay, sauce. Yeah, in the kitchen now, you was, I mean, you smell, it smells so good. Like, because you know when the pastry is dry and it's getting cooked and it's pan fried, like the aroma of it. Okay, um, I'm gonna place You know the gotie is, it's gonna be really, really good. Okay. I think a lot of times cooking is also the anticipation that makes it fun. Because you, yeah, you're like, oh my God, this is, you know, coming together. Who's going to eat it? How are we going to eat it? Who are we, who are we going to eat it? We're going to be it's all part of the, the whole cooking and eating experience. Okay, here we go. The dipping sauce is ready. Yes. And when I get my gotie out, my fried dumplings out, I always place them upside down. Yes, that's the, the real way, the authentic way of doing yeah. it. Yes. The idea is to show your golden pastry at the bottom and also so the dumpling doesn't get soggy. Because if you keep them, uh, you know, crispy side down, it goes soggy very quickly. Crispy side up, it'll stay crispy for longer. Yes. Yeah. You're going to get a pair of tongs, people. Get a pair of tongs out. Or you can use chopsticks if you're proficient with no using to them. Lift this lid up and show everyone the court here. And very quickly, check on your dumplings just to make sure nothing's burning. Yes. We still have steam coming out, which yes. means there's water in there. Yep. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, they become translucent. They're Ooh. good, though. They're looking good. So we're yeah. just going to... Leave them in there, finish yeah, off another, how many more minutes? One more minute. Yeah, one more minute, and then we can pull them out. They don't take more than five minutes, generally, if your heat is, you know, perfect. I, I love fried dumplings way more than steamed ones, and I really, really look forward to these. And it happens at all my classes whenever we do our traditional Chinese dumplings class, which is uh, almost twice a month. Yes. Uh, people really look forward to these they get very excited and they keep asking for baskets, more and more baskets to fill. And in the end, they try the fried one and they go, oh, oh, I think I'm going to fry the ones in the basket too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think it's good. One minute already? Yeah. Really? Yes. 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 You sure? Yes, I'm sure. Okay. All right. So I'm going to place them straight on my plate over here. All right. Let's just put this over Sorry. here. 
Can everyone see? Yeah. Okay, let's check first. Yeah. Let's not turn it off. Let's not rush. Okay, once you open it, so it's been about five minutes. Once you've opened it, you just need to make sure it's cooked properly. So your dumpling skin should be translucent mm -hmm. now and changed color completely. And you also need to make sure that the bottom is nice and crisp. Yes. Okay, and if you've got a tiny bit of water left in there, what happens is that the bottom gets kind of soggy. Mm. See here, mm. it's slightly soggy. If, if this happens, just move them around a little bit and make sure, increase the heat slightly. Yes. And make sure you can crisp off the bottom. Yep. Okay. So you're not flipping them around or anything. You're simply increasing the heat to a medium and you're crisping you up the let bottom. all the water to evaporate. Exactly. Okay, now this might not be the case with yours. Yours might be done already. And if they are, you can pull them out. Mine, some of them are done already, so I'm going to start to pull them out. Mm. Okay. They're looking good. Some of them are looking good already. Let's give them up. Yeah, it's really tricky Toss. because of the different type of like the stove and the induction, yeah. the heat treatment. So the best is yeah, this one. Yeah, I mm. don't um, use this often, mm. and so I usually I love gas. Me too. Yeah, these two really love to be stick together. Yeah, this is puffing this up. Is, yeah. So they're getting there. This one's done, so I'm going to put it out. Yep. See that? And you just put it upside down. Wow, look at this one. Yeah. Just let's see that. And we're going to start putting them upside down. So do this if your bottom hasn't crisped up enough. Some of them are done, some of them are not because of the uneven heat that my induction cooker in pots mm. okay i'm gonna start it's this way yep wow wow um, this way very you know oh mm. is that right yes yes that's right <laughs> I'm just going to pop them in the middle. See, like I said, the middle is always hotter yep. than the edges. And we do a few more just the same way while we're waiting for the steam dumplings to be done. And we'll give these a try in the meantime as well. Mm, no. What am I doing wrong? Let me try. <laughs> There, oh. it doesn't want to sit. Oh. It's okay. <laughs> it's supposed to be like this. There, okay. Okay. Awesome. The ones in the middle are done, so. Here we go. Three. A lot of my friends, even my husband keeps asking me, why do I eat so many dumplings and why do I love them so much? <laughs> I have no and answer. You're okay. I love pasta. I love uh, stuffed, stuffed, stuffed pasta stuffed as pasta. much. So Yeah. Stuffed pasta, mandi, which is uh, a Middle Eastern mm -hmm. pasta yes. recipe. There we go. Nice. I have no answer. My husband keeps asking me all the time. Mm. All right, here we go. Make some space there. All mm. right, done. Okay. Let's pop the filling in the mid, the dipping sauce. Dipping sauce in the middle. That's done. Ta -da. Okay, and we're gonna make some more here while we're waiting for the steamed dumplings to be done. Yes. So just a little more oil along the edges, and we're gonna pop some more. Dumplings in there. Check on a timer. Okay, this time these are gonna almost ready and sizzle. A minute and a half. Yeah, these are gonna sizzle faster. Yes, because the, they're gonna the brown pan, faster yeah. because the pan is really hot now and it's not even on high right now. I just increased the heat again. And we can actually finish them all. We've got a few more yep. there that we can finish later on. Again, when you do them the second or the third time, they cook much faster. Mm. Because your pan is actually really hot and it retains the heat. Yeah. 
And if you're doing this on a gas burner, it'll be even faster. They shouldn't take more than a minute to brown. Okay, I'm just gonna pop them in the middle so they brown a little bit faster. Okay, there we go. And then I'm gonna move them to the side so they don't burn. Yeah. So I just want to share, we do have like a challenge now in your app, which is actually about Chinese New Year cooking. So whatever you make today, you can actually upload in the challenge. It's super simple. Uh, you just go to the second tab of the app called challenge. Okay, you want to bring it closer to the camera? Yes. Can yeah. you uh, this one? Yeah. Can you see it? So today, right, when you open the app, the homepage, you're going to see this. So that's uh, Happy New Year in Chinese. Uh, by the way, we are also we are actually being featured on App Store, so it's really great. And we have lots of Chinese New Year specials if you're looking, you know, on dishes, what to cook. And then on the second tab, you have the challenge. So the first is called Gong Xi Ba Tai. You have Lo Hei Hua. You also have uh, okay. Chinese New Year. Can I interrupt for a sec? Of course. Hold on, guys. So we're going to reduce the heat. My dumplings are brown already. Oh, looks great. Yeah, three tablespoons of water. Yep. Again, one. Two, three, cover, five minutes. Yep. Okay. The steamed ones are already done. I'm going to yes. pull those out as well. Okay. okay. So we can have a look at those two. You can continue talking. Okay. So uh, we had a challenge tab, right? Yes. And then you can just use, you see here, like, uh, yeah. So you can just start a new one, like, for example, the dumplings, right? You can just click on the, the picture and you're in. And you can just type well, how you did. You can add more pictures. And you can type how to share your experience. Choose the hashtag, the Gong uh, Xi Ba Tai. Yeah, and our Chinese New Year. And then publish. And then you will see your um, uh, creations in the, in the challenge page. Look, so many people have shared a cooking. This is mine. <laughs> We have shared lohei, people have shared pun thai, pops, cookies, chives, pancake. So join the fun, start sharing. All right, guys, we are done with our steamed dumplings as well. I'm going to open this up and show you what they look like so you know what they should look, look like when they come out of the yes. steamer. Now, as soon as they come out of the steamer, as soon as I open the steamer, there's no need to serve these in another plate. You actually just serve them directly into the steamer. Yes. Okay. And see the color? Ooh. They're translucent. And I'm going to keep them like that. Looks beautiful. All can right. you see the second tray? Yes, can. Can, can. Look at that. Right. Yes. And I am not going to wait any longer mm. to serve these. You've got to serve these quickly and eat them as fast as you can because nothing worse than cold dumplings, guys. Mm. All right. So we're going to finish the session yes. here. We've got our goat here ready. We've got our jiaozi ready. We've got our dipping sauce ready. Let's eat, shall we? Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the session today. And please, please show us your creations. Tag us on Commune Kitchen SG on Instagram or Facebook so I can see what you made today. Yes, please, please tag. And uh, you can share also in the challenge page so we can also give likes and share. Yep. Okay? And next month, we're going to take a little break. So yes. we won't be here next month for our online class, but we will be back again in April after Easter. Okay. All right? Uh, happy Chinese New Year. Yes, Happy, happy New, New Year. Year. Happy New Year and enjoy your dinner, guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. <laughs>